Hello, I'm Ross Contino with Bites Bread and Barbecue. Today we're going to be talking about a common problem when you're trying to learn WordPress on a local server under Linux or Mac. This is not an issue under Windows. So what we're going to do um, is go through a, a simple correction. A lot of times when you're trying to learn WordPress, you download it and install it to a local server on your computer like XAMPP so you don't have to practice online and you go to change the theme or upload a particular graphic and you get a prompt to access an FTP server that really doesn't exist. And today I'm going to show you how to fix that. So let's take a look. Here we are. We're on Linux in this case, and this works exactly the same on Linux and Mac. They're both Unix based systems. And we're in the theme tab for WordPress after we've installed it following the instructions for XAM. And we go to change the theme and we get this prompt. And you don't know what to do with it. No matter what you do with it, it never works. So let's show you how to fix that. You'll see that same prompt if you try to upload a graph. So you open up a terminal in both Linux and Mac, and you type in ID and hit enter. And here you're gonna see user IDs and group IDs. This will be different on every computer. But you see in this particular rendition, it has my name there as Ross and Ross, as the user ID and the group, okay. And we're going to start our XAMPP and we're going to turn the servers on. So we're going to start our Apache web server and also our MySQL database. And once the lights turn green, we can exit out of this particular program. There they are, they're green. And we're going to close them on out. And are you sure? Yes, I am sure. Now the next thing we're going to look for is we're going to look for a file called httpd.config. Now remember, on Linux, this is in your opt folder and under LAMP. In Mac, it's under Applications and XAMPP. And we're going to go to the, EC, the ETC folder and there we find our httpd.config file. And we're going to open that with VS Code. Now the reason I like to use that is the VS Code does have the ability to save as a sudo and remember, if, when you created this on Linux, it was definitely in a sudo directory. So we're going to look for user and group. So you keep scrolling down through this document until you find user and group. You go down, 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 down. And here we are, user and group. And you'll see that the default is daemon. And that is the default on every system. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to copy these. And the reason I'm copying and pasting is I like to leave a copy of the original, so if I ever have to go back, I know what the default was when they were entered. So I'm gonna paste them in here, and I'm gonna comment out with a hashtag, the original installation, and you'll see that it turns green here. So it's commented out. Now under user and group, we're gonna change that. Remember, it was Ross and Ross when we typed an ID at the terminal. So we're gonna change it to both of those. And we're going to save our file. Now, the nice thing here, as I said, this allows you to save as sudo. It's going to go, when you go to save, it's going to say, it can't. Would you like to try it in sudo mode? You say yes. It'll prompt you for your sudo password. You type it in. And away the file goes. Now we've altered that httpd.config file. And we can close all that out. Now, going back to XAMPP we have to restart our servers to make these changes take place. So our Apache and MySQL servers are running, but we're going to restart them so that it uses that config file with the new settings. And once our lights turn green, we can go ahead and go into our WordPress administrator, which is usually localhost and then wherever you have your website installed with the WP admin file. And you can see here that I had a couple subdirectories. The site that I'm creating is called Hot Cars. And we log in here to get to our administrative page. And I had it defaulted back to the theme page. 
Now remember, we got that FTP error. Now we've restarted our servers with the new parameters. We're gonna go down to that same theme, the, um, the one that we wanted, the Inspiro, and we're gonna hit install and watch. This time, no prompt for FTP, and it is in fact installing correctly. So once the theme becomes installed, we can go to our main theme page, and we can see now there are four themes here, and our Inspiro is the second one. And if we hover over that, we're now able to activate it. And just to prove that everything is working, once the file becomes activated, we're gonna to try to upload an image to the, to the theme to change the background image. After all those waves and rocks, they're not gonna to look too cool for a site about cars. We're gonna to go to customize with the appearance uh, for the Inspiro theme. And to do this, we're gonna scroll down here and just look at the home page area, click configure. And for this particular theme on the left-hand bar, if we scroll down, you're gonna see it has the background images here. We go to media and we go down. And there's the background. We don't want that. We want to add a new image. And I had gone online and I had just found an image of a Bugatti Byron. And I'm going to select that. I had downloaded that image. And we're going to look at pictures of Bugatti and we're going to open that up. And you can see now that image that would have also created an FTP error box comes up and it uploads that to our local site. We can now place that. And if we go to review our look, we're going to have to publish it first. Publish the page. And if we go to our main WordPress dashboard and we click on the hot cars to view the site, there it is. So what we've shown is that it's easy to change the parameters so that you can play with WordPress on your local server, on your hard drive, and you can even download new themes. And we avoid that FTP error. If this was helpful, please click subscribe and like our video. It helps me with YouTube. And I hope that you had some good information here on Bite Spreads and Barbecue. And thanks for stopping by.